Thank you, Chrissy, and uh, RIU for the opportunity to present and, and talk to you, investors based out here in the Southwest. <clears throat> in the uh, junior space, that uh, business that we operate, what's very important for us to have the location of the project to be geologically in a good code, postcode, and the team that has successfully and credibly developed and discovered those projects. The picture that I show here in the first picture is from my flagship project now in a high sulfidation copper porphyry alteration <coughs> rocks up in Andines in San Juan district of Argentina. And the uh, picture is my exploration director, Jason Ward, his Australian geologist who has got 13 discoveries to his credit. The last one he did was in Ecuador for Sol Gold, a project called Cascabel. A few pence company became a multi-billion dollar company. And uh, Jason has got a good track record. I'm a mining engineer, I'm not a geologist, so I'm just speaking what Jason is teaching me along the way. So I'll tell you my story more on the corporate side. Just a disclaimer, you can probably read in your own time. Just a bit of an uh, introductory slide. We are focused on battery and renewable uh, markets, targeting our copper, zinc, gold, silver, lithium, nickel, and lead resources. Our TMT project, which is in San Juan district in uh, Argentina, as you can see from the picture on the right-hand side, up in the red dot over there. Uh, San Juan district is ranked number one by Fred Institute of Australia in terms of the mining friendliness. And it's, a, it's an area where everybody is exploring uh, I'll show you some pictures. And uh, you got Barrick, you got London, you got BHP, Glencore, FMG, Hancock. Everyone's there. It's hard to find drill rig if you want to drill a hole there. It's a very booming area. And uh, we got sort of adjacent Ward, who has who had the project. I got it. I got it from him. He has been working on collecting this project over about 10 years. And. Uh, some of the ground was held by Rio Tinto. They didn't do a lot of work because they were focused on Mongolia at that time. And other bits and pieces he joined together. And he's more excited on this one than he tells me he was excited on the previous discovery he did in Cascabel. And he's backing himself by investing US $1 million of his own personal money into the company. And that money will be, will be paying them in shares. We already have issued the shares. And the, and the money, he will be spending real money paying contractors, people in Argentina doing the real work for us. That's a really good sort of support from our shareholders' point of view. We now have established an office in, in San Juan. We have a team now full place operating there. And we, out of the nine EIAs that I needed to start the work, I've got six, so that has allowed me to start the work, which is building the roads, which we have done, setting them infrastructure, and now the team is on ground doing the real work. In, in addition to the, um, the, the main project that had become a main project for us now, I did my IPO last year. We're not a very old company. We did the IPO in 2022 in January. Flagship project that time was Bellara project, which is on the New South Wales. If you look on the picture on the top right hand side, we are three hour drive towards Orange and Maji, locked and fold belt. Did a lot of drilling, about 7,000 meters drilling, in his established initial. Joke resource of 5 million ton of 3.4% zinc. It has got zinc, copper, lead, gold, and silver in them. It's got 643 square kilometer area that we have. It's very prospective still, and we're still doing a lot of work there to increase that resource. And in Bulabuling near Kulgari, we have this old 49 square kilometer area that we have just around Norton Gold's 3 billion ounces uh, gold deposit and very near to other near, uh, recent lithium discoveries. And we are looking and have done some work and found some Pathfinder lithium element there. And we've done the soil, which we'll be announcing next week. And hopefully, we can repeat some of the finding of the recent in our neighbors uh, and find some lithium-bearing pegmatites. Just a bit quickly on the board, uh, very proud of my board. And Neil Warburton, my chairman, legendary, known to a lot of people here, I'm sure. Uh, my background is a mining engineer. I came in this country in 1988. Rio Tinto brought me out from my campus after having done Rio in Mount Isa mines. I spent a couple of years in Africa working for Anglo-American. I've done a few listings in the past, and then my last listing was uh, back in 2007. I raised about $40 million to set up a copper mine and plant in India. Employed everybody in that business from zero to 2,000 people that I had and sold a lot of concentrates. So I know a bit of copper and base metal. 
Jason Ward is a large shareholder now, and also Jason Ward is the exploration director of the business, and uh, he's driving a lot of my strategy right now. Another two directors, Harmer Robertson, very good expert on uh, ASX compliances, finance background, and John Trackers is our legal director and also company secretary. Other uh, unique feature of my company is that we are very tightly held, only 67 billion shares on issue. And I have very clear visibility about 70 to 75 percent on those shares because 30 percent is owned by the directors and the management, and about 30 to 40 percent is owned by key brokers who are good supporter of business, including the Canacote, uh, who are who are the sponsor of this event and the CPS Capital. So very tightly held register in my share price. Uh, we were one of the better performing IP of the last year. Uh, our share price ran uh, pre-Ukraine war and pre-interest inflation. Uh, to dollar fifty from twenty cents, we are still around forty-eight, fifty to sixty cents in that region, and everybody else is now. The market is waiting for me to start the work at this uh, TMT project in Argentina, and hopefully some of the results that I'm going to start bringing out, uh, that should start to sort of take us back to the way we were before. This is just about the <coughs> TMT project. That uh, red area that you see is the three hundred square kilometer area. Immediately south of me is an operating mine by Barrick and Shandong. They are operating Valadero mine. They have a large Pesco Lama deposit. I mean, they are 22 million ounces and 6 million ounces deposits and uh, operating mine. And the immediately north of us, if you look, there's a, uh, a very big discovery of the recent time by Philo de Sol, which is largely owned by London and backed by BHP with the 100 million investment they have made in there. And one of the intersections, if you look at there on the bottom hand side on the picture, this intersection is the, the 1.3 kilometer at 1.3 percent copper equivalent. You don't hear those many times in life. So this is uh, Andean Range, and uh, the black line that you say is the border between Chile and, and San Juan. The, the Chile produces 20 percent of the world copper. Peru produces 10 percent. So this region produces a lot of copper and not. So on the Chilean side, the drilling density on the Chilean side is very high because Chile has been a bit more ahead of Argentina in terms of developing the mine industry. It's the same rock on this side of the border in Argentina, but it's not been drilled. But now with the, with the test that they have got, the government, San Juan particularly, which is very good government, supporting the mining, there's a lot of new work happening. $400 million were spent just in this, that province last year for exploration, and uh, there is six months queue to get a drill rig there. So it's very, very booming. As I said before in my introduction, there's everybody there looking for copper. And this is the work that was done by my <coughs> technical advisor, Dr. Steve Garvin. Him and uh, Jason Ward have teamed up on many discoveries, including the one I mentioned before in the Cascabel. They have done the satellite uh, <coughs> Aster 2, Aster and Sentinel 2 data processing, and uh, they come up with this black line that you see the structures running north and south and east and west. And where they intersect, that's where they seem to think there's an old body that they have found. So they have looked at the nearby ones, which is Philo de Sol, Baladuro, and many others. And looking at them, uh, what he's predicting is, there, is that uh, the, we have got 11 targets which are look-alike, which are look-alike Philo de Sol and Baladuro. And that's where we're going to focus in our work in the next one. It's good to have the endorsement from people like Dr. Garvin. Uh, some of the work, uh, the small amount of work has been done on my southern tenement called Toro Project, that you see in the inset, and, uh, and other ground is not much work is done, which is good, and, uh, and then we, we don't know what you will find. But the grades that we would found in those, in those uh, samples, surface samples, well, look at the grades, 13% zinc, 2.5 grams gold, 1.9% copper, and very, very high silver. Uh, this is the 11 targets that Dr. Garvin, uh, that I mentioned before, through their uh, Sentinel uh, and, and this Aster work that they have done, with the help of Fathom Geophysics, who have done the geophysics work for us. And this is some old drilling. I'm, I'm not focused on zinc, but I know I can produce a zinc resource. But uh, the drilling in the past, 22 holes drilled, one of the holes, as you can see, is 266 meter long. I'm only showing zinc rates here, 0.7, but some of the good intersections, 60 meters at 2.4%, 29 meters, 1.7%. So the, the zinc that we have was drilled before is probably is an expression of a large porphyry sitting further deep, and through the cracks and everything has come up on surface, and that's how the geology 
is being interpreted right now. So I know we got zinc, but it's just a manifesto, just a pathfinder probably for a copper porphyry system, which is what we are hunting. Uh, this is just a comparison to show uh, uh, between philodesol and our rock. So uh, in, the, in the background, if you see the, all the colors that you see, the muscovite and the profilarite and gerosite, and all those rocks are in a similar fashion present in my ground also. So in its endings, there's no vegetation, nothing. So it's very easy for us to be able to see the rocks, be able to do the work much easier, although we will be doing a lot more geophysics work also to confirm some of these expression on the surface. So just in summary, um, uh, in terms of copper gold and TMT project, uh, we have best possible location that you can be, high porphyry potential, actual results in the desktop studies, which is the living target and unexplored targets, and the zinc um, is there. Uh, and uh, when the zinc prices are back to 3,500 US, probably I'll look into doing a resource there. But at the moment, I'm more focused on finding the giant copper that we think that we can find there. And just very quickly covering the Australian projects, uh, we have about 643 square kilometers in uh, New South Wales. Uh, as I said before, we've done 7,000 meters of RC diamond drilling. We got 5 million ton of 3.4% copper. And we have only explored, actually, if you look at the Bellara native B9, they are the two old mines which were mined for very high grade copper, 3 to 5% copper, 2 to 4.5 grams gold, uh, pre World War. We've only done about 2 kilometers of the 25 kilometer corridor, which is prospective. Now, the next level of work that we are doing is testing out the remaining 21, 22 kilometers and we have done some surface sampling, some mapping rock chips. And I'll just quickly show you, this is the resource model and in a high grade shoot going down further north and south. And we will be looking at drilling to extend that resource. Look at this on the right, seven meters at 2.2% zinc, two and a half percent copper, including three meters at about 5.85% copper. So some very good intersections. It's got base resource, we, need, we will look at extending that. This is the second project, Porphyry, which shows a plunge on the southern side going down deep, and needs testing, which we'll be doing in the future. And this is the Ben Buckley, the, the next project, which might be similar to Bilara project, and uh, holds the promises. The rock chips, the peak rock chip acid results were 4.6% copper and 1.5% zinc. So we got those, looks like a repetition that we need to follow, which we will follow. And just covering very quickly my project uh, in WI. Initially, when I took the project in IPO, it was mainly for the gold because it surrounds all the uh, three million ounces the, in the Norton project, Bulobuling project. But uh, recently, uh, there has been a lot of lithium work around us. And then we switched the strategy and look, started looking for lithium. So we have our rubidium and all the pathfinder element from the rock chips mapping work that we have done. So next logical work that we have done now is soil. And the soil results are now with us. And they're being analyzed. It will be announced next, next week sometime. And we are very encouraged with what we are saying so far. And hopefully, we can probably do the repetition of some of the more successful future battery metal, which is only about 11 and a half kilometers from us on the same rock from the granite. And uh, when we do the testing, we'll see if we can find some from lithium bearing pegmatites. So there's a lot of news flow coming up from the TMT project. We have already announced the grant of the, all the permits. The team is there. Our basic setup is all set up. We are doing now the groundwork. Steve Garvin is going on site. Jason Ward is living there. And uh, part, then we start this massive groundwork, then the magnetics, hopefully some geophy, more geophysics work, leading some drill targeting work by the next quarter and the quarter after. And in terms of Australia project, we will continue to extend our mineralization at Bellara, look for more uh, repetition of that at Bulobuling. We'll be hopefully drilling for lithium pegmatite before the year ends. So in very summary, I'm almost done, Chrissy. Uh, field explosion TMT to commence which we have commenced. Explosion director, Jason Ward, he's an Australian guy, married to an Argentinian girl with a couple of kids. Now he lives in Argentina full time, which is good news for me and my shareholder. And he has invested his own one billion US into the company. Preliminary work, we got 11 targets. Bulobuling, very hopeful, we probably would hit something, lithium bearing pragmatites. And uh, Bellara exploration is, is a whole sort of promises for us to increase that five million answer that we already have initially. Thank you very much, I think.